Well, they come out here to do this match, and they had a very, very, very fun pro wrestling match. You know what they had? They had, as I noted on Twitter, they had Evil versus Naito. You I had, you had Honky Tonk Man playing the role of Evil. He had 50,000 fucking people interfering on his behalf. Yes. The referee completely incompetent like Red Shoes. You had the big time babyface and Randy Savage, who just kept getting fucked right and left. Who is an anti hero like Los Ingobernables? Yes. The the only difference was we had a DQ here and not Honky Tonk Man actually beating Randy Savage. But mm. other than that, like it sounds totally crazy, but if you watched Evil Naito, no. this is the same fucking match. Actually this is much better. <laughs> if I'm being actually totally honest. it was. But but I see your point. We're so used, point. Vinny. For those of you that don't know, Vinny and I used to work for Tim Flowers, ICW, and I think PWF it was called in the States. For some reason, if we were in Canada, it had a different name than when we were in the U.S. But it was yes. Tim Flowers' promotion. So same, same crew, same belts, but yes. Yes, we, we regularly did shows with the Honky Tonk Man. And, you know, by this point, this was late 90s, early 2000s. Honky was still getting a shit ton of bookings, but he was doing nothing. And I don't think Honky would be mad for me to say that. It's just a fact. No. Like, even the shake, rattle, and roll, he wouldn't even take a bump for the no. shake, rattle. He would shake, rattle, and the other person would take a bump, and he would yeah. stand there, and then yeah. he would cover them. He took no bumps. Mm -hmm. So watching him here, flying around the ring, yes. bumping right and left, working yes. his ass off, I was like, wow, Honky's going here. Honky was going. He had to keep up with Macho, to be fair. And it was only a <laughs> decade earlier. Uh, eh, a little more. but a About a decade. Yeah. But uh, yes, but he was also getting paid more, I'm sure. Uh, so anyway, they had a long mass match, too. They were working hard and, and a fast pace for a long time. So what I like about these matches here in 87 is they, they, they got to do commercial breaks. And they never just have someone hit a dive and Vince would say, come back as Saturday night's main event rolls on. There would be a reason for an interruption. In this case, Savage is running wild. Actually, before we get to that, I, I want to point something out here. Savage takes over at the beginning. Uh, when it's time for the heat, Jimmy Hart distracts or uh, starts to stalk Miss Elizabeth on the outside. So Savage gets, leaves the ring to save Liz, and Honky Tonk Man jumps in from behind on the floor. Five minutes later, Honky has things well in hand. It is time to, as he promised, to go steal Savage's woman. So he leaves the ring to dance and shimmy and gyrate for Liz, and then Savage attacks him from behind because it's poetic justice and everything made sense back in the day. Well, you know what's funny about that, Vinny, is this, they had, I mean, it was funny watching the show because Vince didn't want wrestling during the commercial breaks. Right. Which was something that he brought back last year. One yes. day he woke up and he decided he didn't want any wrestling during the commercial breaks. Just like on Saturday night's main event. Now, when there's a Saturday night's main event, you know, every four months... Yeah. I think the last one we saw was, what, April or something like that? And now it's... April, May, yes. October? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When you rarely see a Saturday night's main event, and the show's got like three or four matches, and they find a way to go to commercial and not have wrestling during the break, fine. When you got to do that for every fucking segment on a three-hour yeah. Raw and a two-hour yes. SmackDown, I talked to an agent there who was not Lance, by the way. I want to make that clear. And this person was like, it's fucking bullshit. You know how hard it is to come up with some stupid fucking idea for every match on a three-hour show every single Monday night? But anyway, it worked here. But it was funny to see that Vince is just as crazy now as he always was. Yes. So what they did in this match was, as Savage is running wild making covers, Jimmy Hart starts breaking up pins from the outside. He is putting Honky's leg on the ropes. He is grabbing Savage by the head and pulling him off. At one point, Jimmy actually enters the ring to grab Honky's leg and pull him out of a pin. So Savage finally could take no more. He takes things into his own hands. As you noted, the referee is incompetent letting all this go on. So Savage just drags Jimmy into the ring and decks him. And that's the end of the Mouth of the South of Jimmy Hart. He goes out of the ring. He lies on the ground. He does not move. 
The match continues for a minute or two until Honky spots the body of Jimmy Hart not moving the floor. He goes to tend to him. Jimmy's other champions, the Hart Foundation, come running, and I do mean running out to check on Jimmy Hart. After a few minutes, the three of them carry Jimmy to the back, and we go to break. So after the break, here come here comes Honky and the Hearts walking down to the ring, and they're pissed. <laughs> As as much as a joke of the honky tonk man was, and I say that with all respect, look at the guy. When it came time to fight, he was a dangerous, dangerous man. So he gets in the ring, a house of fire, and the hearts are out there interfering left and right, and he takes over. My favorite part in the second half of this match is that Randy Savage at one point did he did a, the uh, reverse atomic drop, and then from that position attempted to pin the honky tonk man with a double leg takedown. <laughs> it's Bob Backlund playing the part of Randy Savage. So, they keep going. This match is longer than Ricky Steamboat's entire title reign, I think. Eventually, Savage, as Randy Savage often does, we talked about this when he was on Nitro every week, when it's time to go home, he does not waste time. Bad guy goes for his finish, Randy counters it, hits one body slam, hits the big elbow, and the hearts attack for the DQ. So, a, a, a very fun match. Like The whole thing... Including what we're about to talk about, the whole thing took like a half hour of TV time. So this is this is the bulk of the show. Now, before we get to what actually happened, I just want to talk about how the heels go after Randy afterwards, and Liz is there, and I think she's concerned, but I'm not sure because she always looks like that. Yes, I'm pretty she's sure a very that's. Good actress. I mean, you know, her and Stephanie. You might as well put a, a picture of Liz and say, like, what's the emotion here? That's fair. So she's all confused, I think, and. Bobby Heenan says, she's a woman. Of course she's helpless. Hmm. So, Honky goes, and he gets his guitar. And obviously, I know it's coming. The mega powers are going to form. So, he goes to get this guitar, and Liz can take no more. And she jumps in the ring in front of Honky to take a bullet. Yes. For the, the macho the, man, the, Randy Savage. The hearts are holding Randy Savage. Bret Hart and Jim Neidhart, they've got his arms. They're holding him up, and they're going to Elkabong the hell out of him, and Liz gets in the way. So Honky shoves Liz down. Well, he does, but only after several attempts, because as an evil bastard as the honky-tonk man was, he did not want to put his hands on Elizabeth. He gestured for her to leave many times. He gave her several opportunities to get out of the way, and she refused. Nonetheless, she persisted. And so Honky finally just shoved her down. Well, Vinny, he's still a dick. He is. He shoved her on her ass. I'm not saying he's he not. He starts shaking his dick in front of her for fuck's sake. That, that also happened, yeah. So she runs to the back. So Honky grabs his guitar. And he stands there. And he swings his guitar around. <laughs> and he lifts it up over his head. And he rears back, and he puts it down, and he puts it in his other hand, and he looks around at the people, and he raises it in the air, and he puts it down again, mm -hmm. and finally he takes it with two hands, and he raises it above his head. I thought, where the fuck are you, Hulk? Dude, bro, he's been in here for 15 minutes wielding this fucking guitar. I'm sure I was positive that Hogan was going to run down and stop the guitar shot. I'm just yes. waiting for it. Like, okay, all right, he's obviously not going to get to the ring, but, like, Honky's going to have the guitar up, and all of a sudden, hey, it's real American. Honky lifts the guitar up. I'm waiting. Hit the fucking music, Vince. And all of a sudden, Honky goes, bonk, and he hits Randy Savage on the head. I was like... What in the fuck did you take so long for, dude? <laughs> a fucking ice age came and went. Well, Between the time that you picked that guitar up and you actually El Kabong this guy. Well. Which, and I'm like, fuck. Once he hit the guy, then it's like, Randy has no fucking friends. Not one friend. Nobody's coming out to save this guy. He didn't what? even try to fight back. He just stood there waiting to be executed for like 25 fucking minutes. I was aghast. So okay, he's go. dead. A couple things before we move on. So Liz, in addition to not being an actress, I don't think was much of a sprinter. She had to shuffle to the back in her high heels and go find, spoiler, Hulk Hogan, convince him to come help the Macho Man, who was no friend of his. 
Actually, so I don't think she convinced him to go help the Macho Man. I think she just said, Hulk, I need your help. That's actually true. Because when true. she's dragging him to the ring, he's baffled. He has no idea what the hell Why she's Why is this him. pretty, worried-looking woman dragging me towards this ring? Did uh, I miss my cue? Is Sika out there? Yes. So, then, yes. The Hulky Talk Man of the Hearts did stall for a long, long time. To give Liz time to get backstage and find Hogan to get back. <laughs> they they couldn't just lay him out with it's a guitar. It's a fucking tape show, dude. Well, there's that. <laughs> that is a strong point. <laughs> but the, the, the options were stall for five minutes and then hit him with a guitar and then Hogan come out. Or hit him with a guitar and then bebop around the ring doing nothing for five minutes. So pick your poison. So eventually they do lay him out with a guitar. Savage is down. And then, yes, in the nick of time, out comes Liz dragging Hulk Hogan to the ring. He's baffled. He's befuddled. He's bewildered. But then he sees what's going on, and he's outraged. And to this point, he has not always been in the same page with the Macho Man. They have not always seen eye to eye. But he knows a three-on-one beatdown is just not right. And so he hits the ring to face all three heels. Not just all three heels. As they pointed out, as Vince pointed out, this was the four champions in the WWF in the ring at the same time. The tag team champions, the intercontinental champion, and the world champion. Their four biggest stars. And Hogan just wipes them out with them. <laughs> just lays them out. Savage recovers and starts to beat guys up too. It was completely unnecessary. And in the scrum, after the ring has been cleared, Hogan and Savage back up into each other and t turn back ready to ready to throw hands but they hesitate and then after a moment's pause savage is the first to offer his hand in friendship and hogan does the hogan look around the crowd and they all say yay and hoax says yes they do the big giant mega power handshake and the place is going crazy this was no bullshit fake baby face turn or slow no. ass baby face turn it was like Time to turn this guy baby face. Yes. 100%. It's boom, done. There's no, ah, oh, find out what's going to happen on primetime wrestling or any of this no. other bullshit. <laughs> no. Like the whole angle from start to finish, 40 minutes of TV if you take out commercials. Yeah. From start to finish, it was this whole thing right there. Which, by the way, the whole Mega Powers angle started with Liz holding Hulk's hand. It did. Yes. It did. And then uh, after Hogan shakes Savage's hand, he turns to Liz in the corner, and you have never seen a more gentlemanly action by a professional wrestler than Hogan daintily offering his hand to Liz to bring her to the ring. And he raises their hands together, and the place is just going monstrously apeshit. The place is just crazy with joy at seeing Hogan and Savage together as one.